Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're still with us here on the Sea Morning Show. As we approach the middle part of our program, it is time for our first discussion of the day. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, related to what a lot of people are uh, very close and near and dear to, which is your families and your yes. kids. Now, as kids, we're always learning and growing, but sometimes we can get stuck in the belief that our abilities are fixed and we're unable to make any improvements. This is where having a growth mindset comes in. Mm -hmm. And one way to develop a, a growth mindset is by trying new things and embracing challenges. Joining us this morning are Natasha Adlin uh, Haryanto and Kiara and, uh, Andika Yapari from Creative Pop who will help us to do growth mindset and creativity workshop. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks Thanks morning. Welcome morning. to our us. studio. Yes. It's good to be here. <laughs> All right, so it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That is their mascot, by yes. the way. Yes. <laughs> That's our mascot. <laughs> okay, tell us more about Growth Mindset Workshop and what are the benefits for kids? Is it possible to train a kid to have a growth mindset? Yeah, thank you for having us. I think it's definitely possible. I think growth mindset is something that we try to encourage in all of our students at Creative Pop. So this particular workshop, uh, we're really focusing on getting kids out of their comfort zone and um, going from no, I don't want to try that to yes, I'm willing to try and you know see challenges as an opportunity for growth and kind of build that uh, resilience. So in this workshop, we try to instill this value in the kids um, through application because with kids you have to incorporate a lot of games and activities to make them want to uh, try these skills. So it's definitely possible uh, to, okay. to do that. So yeah. you, you're not focusing on any one particular area of growth, but mm -hmm. just changing a kid's mindset to want to just try new things. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And to add on to Natasha, it's not just possible to teach this to kids, it's actually the best time to learn growth mindset, right? Okay. Because okay. it's an attitude that yeah. makes you, you know, be able to optimize anything that you learn. So oh, okay. for, for kids, since there's so much for them to learn, if they can have this attitude early on, then that really sets them up for a maximum progress and improvement as they grow up. Okay, so you mentioned this is like the, the, the best age or the best time. Mm -hmm. So who is it for exactly? What is what is the ideal age for kids to start? Mm -hmm. um, and who is it for? I mean, is it different for different personality types? For example, if a child is more of an introvert, is mm -hmm. this more encouraged, encouraged for them? Because that way they'll be able to explore a little bit more or be braver when it comes to uh, growth. Yeah, I think we try to make our classes for um, kids in all stages of okay. life. So this particular workshop, it was for 8 to 13 year olds. Okay. But we take the same approach in all our classes and we offer it from kindergarten to high school. So we see it um, as something that can be applied for all kids. But like you said, some kids are a little bit more shy and introverted, yeah. whereas others are a bit more outspoken. Yeah. So we don't try to separate them in the class, but instead we um, carefully like choose how we divide our attention and see who uh, maybe needs a little bit more guidance in that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. So but nice to keep them together. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They can learn from each other too. Right. Yeah. So yeah, because sometimes kids are you know, seeing uh, the friends who yeah, like to do true. so, so they want to join with the activity and yeah, everything. Yeah. So tell us the flow of doing growth mindset workshop, and uh, probably could, could you please show us how to yeah, do take it. us through it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess I'll start and key. Um, <laughs> so. For this workshop, we called it Theater and Transformation, a growth mindset workshop because at Creative Pop, we do a lot of uh, creative subjects to try to get uh, kids like, you know, learning as they're doing. Mm -hmm. So we started this workshop by you know, teaching them a little bit about the brain and how it makes, keeps making connections and uh, growing as you're learning new things. Um, and we try to you know, introduce them to the attitude shift, you know, going from, no, I don't want to do this, but yes, and we, we can do this. Um, wow. Yeah, so <laughs> we did it through theater. Uh, okay. So we did it through improv, and oh. improv is like improvisation where you're just thinking on the spot, and we just give them a bunch of prompts, and they have to answer it, because um, you're put in a situation where you have to trust your instincts and be willing to do it. So, okay. for example, we have this game okay. called Yes And. Uh -huh. um, so it means exactly what it says. So kids aren't allowed to say, no, I don't want to do this. The, the game is called Yes And. Okay. So for example, I will say like, I'm going to the market to get groceries. And then the next person will have to say, 
oh yes, and this time I'll remember to bring my reusable bag. So they have to continue the conversation. And each person has to do a yes and. Yeah. Can yeah. we try it? Can we try it? Yeah, okay, yeah, we should yeah, try yeah. it. Okay, go ahead. So Just give us a random one. I think what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you, you actually don't want them to overthink things. Yeah, exactly. You just want them just, to just react. Just go okay. with the flow. That's the point of improv, right? You okay. go with the flow, you right. think on your feet. Oh my God. Let's see what we come And we want to overcome, you know, their fear of judgment and everything. Oh my God. So don't think. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Don't doubt yourself. We have a bunch of random objects. Okay. What we can do is we can start okay. and grab an object and say anything about it. Then you can join in and okay. then say yes and something, something, okay, okay. and then continue. Sounds and like we fun. can build off of each other. Sure. No overthinking. Okay. So thinking. Here yeah. I can start and okay. take a random object, and you can so, grab an object and okay. mention I'm it. I'm gonna get an object. Wow, this monkey hat is so cute. Oh yes, and it looks like you could live in the jungle. <laughs> and then you can add on. Then you can continue. Uh, yes, and it looks good on you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and as lo good as it looks on you, I would love to see it on me. <laughs> yes, and luckily right? I can yeah. pass it to you. Oh, okay. Nice. Hey. Nice. That's how was that? Oh, action. Hey, there you go. Yeah, that's an example. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, what have you? Oh, what do you see happening so when kids are doing this sort of thing? Are they just kind of letting go more and not being afraid to be wrong or embarrassed? Because that is a thing, right? When you're in a group situation. Yeah, for sure. So, um, this particular class is an improv workshop, right? right? And you might not necessarily see the direct connection with that and growth mindset. But the key to growth mindset is introducing a form of challenge. Okay. And improv is something that even seasoned performers can struggle with. Yes. Right? Because, like I said, it's high pressure. You have to uh, think on your feet. Yeah. And you have to put on a performance at the same time. So, okay. um, oh. yeah, okay. with this improv workshop, even though it's just a one-time thing, at the end, uh, throughout the three hours, we were able to see a progression in the kids. At the start, they were really shy. They didn't really know each other and were scared to get out of the yeah. shell. Yeah. But at the end, they put on a wonderful, wacky performance right. that yeah. everybody nice. loved. I guess what it does is, I can imagine it just kids letting their guard down. Yeah. yeah. It's like a nice sure. icebreaker because yeah. you all had a laugh exactly. at each other. Probably you can teach to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's just for kids. Very right. overthinking, <laughs> so you can train ourselves yeah. to be, you know, mm -hmm. open mindset, growth mindset yeah, right. by playing this game too. Yeah. Yes, and <laughs> yeah. by say yes to we everything. We should do this before every show. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what other uh, activities do you have in this workshop? So this was like the like kind of like an icebreaker for okay. the kids because warm up. yeah, warm up, and then it kind of build up to this final performance. So in all of our classes, we like to have kind of like a deliverable where we can see the kids apply the skills. So we have like an improv box and basically we have <laughs> the kids pick a random um, a random paper mm -hmm. that reveals like a relationship. For example, classmates and a teacher, tour and a tour guide and tourists and a setting. So it can be like in a train and all that and uh, a conflict. So a type of okay. uh, thing that they're trying to oh. solve. Okay, so me, I want to make sure you the can camera pick... can see this. Oh. Yeah. Because there are different um, categories here. Where can, which camera this can one. show? Yeah. So what, Inside. Uh, yeah, so what she means right there is there, there's a column there on the left that says relationship and then the middle one is setting and the right one is conflict, conflict. and inside are little slips of paper there. There you ah. go, right? Mm -hmm. Where, okay, so take us through how this one works. So basically we had the students take uh, a paper from okay. each uh, box. One of each. One of okay. each. And then they would have to make a whole performance based oh, on so the setting, the relationship. So yeah. you're giving them Her. each guideline. Yeah, the then, box wow. is the scenario. Oh, okay. the Amazing. You so you some, have to create oh, a yeah. story. Yes. We can try it out That's and we nice. can try make a, okay, cool. a skit. So oh my you can try <laughs> okay. one from relationship. You can relationship. pick any. Right. So let's each take one. And you can read it okay, out. Yeah. Let's each take one. Okay. Take one. <laughs> okay. No pressure, Shafira. No pressure. Okay, let's see what we have. Ooh. Waiter and guest. Okay, oh. waiter and guest. And, guess. and you can okay. pick from the middle column, the okay, setting. This would be the setting. Okay. It's, uh... I have a living room. Living room, okay. 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 Living room? Now I'll pick a conflict. <laughs> a guide leading a tour through the weirdest museum ever. Oh wow. my okay. God. Wow. So, okay, so put that together for us. So basically, the relationship between all our characters is some of us are a waiter and some of us are guests. Okay. And we're currently located in a living, living room. room. That is also a museum. That is also a museum. A very wow. weird museum. Okay, right. Oh. In fact, the weirdest museum ever. <laughs> what was the conflict again? 
So it's a guide leading a tour through a weird museum. Okay. Okay. Right. So how would this? Uh, okay. Why don't you start us off? How would this work? That is this a, usually a group thing as well? Where you yeah. Go so it's like other? a group performance with all the kids, and okay. we usually give them time to discuss how they want to do it. Oh, yeah. So Maybe like, like, like yeah. Disney. Yeah. To make a decision. So for is this example, a like scenario the two of you story, can the be plot. with the waiters. Yeah. And exactly. Could be the guests. Okay. At this museum. And yeah. Create this whole set. How long is the performance usually? Usually it takes them five to ten okay. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and then they do multiple so rounds of it. So because oh. there's so many options. Right. All right. So it's important to realize that the goal isn't perfection, right? Yeah. Oh. They do multiple rounds so yes. that they can get better and then they can yes. themselves realize right. how much easier it got the more that they did it. Yeah. So yeah. I notice yeah. your your exercises are not based on like correct answers, so yeah. to speak. Like it's not there's no right or wrong way to yeah. do it. Exactly. Um, so how do you base your evaluation of them, how a child is accepting this and, and, and progressing uh, in, in regards to growth? Oh, you know, I think um, one thing about our platform is we uh, don't want it to be, you know, so results oriented, like you okay. said, right? Oh, we think that the process okay. of them learning is just yeah. as important. Okay. Yeah. It's so, not more important yeah, yeah. than we, the end goal. True. Right. Yeah, right. we really focus on character building and soft skills. So if we notice a, uh, like a student, you know, coming out of their shell more, taking initiative where they want to take it and want to try things out to us, that shows that, you know, that they're growing already. Okay. Um, and of course, like in a one-time workshop like this, it's a little bit, um, you know, unrealistic to expect them to go from really shy to like a really Outspoken. confident. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. 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 So usually when we have recurring programs, that's when we can really see their growth, you know, becoming more comfortable around mm -hmm. their friends and their tutors. Um, and, you know, just being willing to be more active in the class, oh, I think. That's yeah. Important. So you have to kind of like monitor each child. Yeah, and watch yeah. How they, each like, one grows in the evaluation. Ah, that's mm -hmm. So we don't just have like one fixed evaluation, mm -hmm. one. Like one score yeah. that we measure them by. Oh, There's okay. lots of checkpoints along the way. So yeah. if it, let's say it's a public speaking class, we're not just looking at how their speaking skills have improved, but we also want to see what, are, what their attitude is like, mm -hmm. right. what their teamwork skills are like, how open they are to feedback and improvement. Mm -hmm. um, those are also important goals okay. for us to cover. How long for, uh, for each program uh, going? So we have a lot of weekend workshops like this, where it's one time and it's like two to three hours long. Oh. But we also have uh, more recurring classes. Usually it's around six weeks, so we have six sessions, both online. Oh. Um, Is there any uh, like a level, level one, level two, something? So we don't have levels, but we have different approaches to each oh, grade okay. because we can't teach, let's say, a 14-year-old the same yes, way we teach a 4-year-old. Yeah, right. So we call it like our stage of creative development okay. and the types of activities we plan and how we approach the classes change depending on, yes. uh, on the student's age level. What yeah. kind of challenge that you guys are facing throughout this journey? What I mean, kind of challenge? dealing with, with kids and uh, pre-teenage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with kids, there's so many different personalities. Okay. And they're also changing every day, yeah. right? So we really can't anticipate um, the challenges. And we try to make our workshops fun, but at the end of the day, there's always going to be some kids who, you know, we don't want to be here. Mm. And especially since we operate a lot in the after school space, yeah. um, usually they've had like a full day of yeah. like sitting in a classroom, they're drained, they're tired. They want to get on their phone. They yeah. want to get on their phone, <laughs> they just want to go home, they want to eat. So it's really up to us to make sure that every student gets the best mm. out of the experience mm -hmm. right. um, and so that they realize you know we're not doing this for no reason like we want you to be able to enjoy the process you know, have time with your friends yeah um, and you know be proud of yourself for improving right yeah. Yeah. i have uh, i have nice. a recent a recent uh, discovery which was i have a three-year-old boy mm -hmm. um and if you move back uh, age wise He's a pandemic baby, so he basically right. he was, he was yeah. born right before the pandemic and he lived through his entire first part of his life through a pandemic, mm -hmm. which caused him developmental problems. Right. And a lot of what was suggested to us at Hatchery who worked over this past year in helping him to develop quicker was create creative, um, creative activities. Right. For yeah. example, I take him to a weekly art class mm -hmm. and just him playing with textures and paint exactly, in a sensory yeah. class allowed him to start speaking more. Yep. He, he's starting to be happier and less frustrating. I say all this to ask you, why do you think this creative approach and perhaps convincing our, some of our viewers who aren't aware of this, that the creative approach is actually a very good way to help kids develop, especially at a young age? 
Yeah, for sure. I think um, a lot of people think of creativity as just, you know, just singing fun. and yeah, fun yeah, and all yeah, these yeah. things. But yeah, but we really believe that creativity is a, a lifelong skill that's really valuable to a lot of kids or to start really young because I think that it enables, you know, critical thinking, exploration, you know, taking initiative. And we think that it'll benefit them way beyond, like, as they grow older and they, as they start, you know, finding careers and everything. Yeah. So um, we think that through our subjects, we really want kids to feel confident, you know, being expressive with their ideas, you know, playing, but with also intention. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, we think that it can develop to something greater when they grow up. It's, yeah. it's not just one subject area. Yeah. In fact, I might say it's not a subject, it's a skill. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's something that if you start early, then you get used to having a flexible mind. Yeah. So, you know, if you have a flexible mind, then you can approach any challenge more effectively. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I have to admit, like, this, like it, it, things right? have changed over the last few decades. Mm -hmm. Like, when I was a kid, which was a while ago, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like this, they, weren't, right? they weren't encouraging you Me to too. do It was mostly academic. Like, yeah. you get your academic, that's how you yeah. get, quote right. unquote, smart. Yeah. Yeah. And then art class was just kind of on the back burner. Like, yeah, you can go to art sure, class yeah. as an for additional some, thing. Only for some yeah. kids. But nowadays, I think things have changed. There's Thanks a lot to of platforms options. like yourself exactly. as well to help kids develop yeah. in a more creative way yeah. as well. And I certainly have seen the results myself. So, great stuff. Thank you for uh, yes. sharing with us yeah, uh, the so importance much. of thank growth you mindset. So much, you guys. Thank really you. nice thank you to know us. something like this. And so, to, to have the younger generation as yeah. well, to grow and basically to have a growth mindset mm -hmm. that can start very early. Yes, exactly. You guys can very find out more stages. by uh, checking out Creative Pop and uh, find out for yourselves. Uh, in the meantime, thank you once again, ladies. We're thank going you to so take... Much. Thank you so thank much. You. All right, we're going to take another short break here on the program, but in case you joined us late, don't worry. We're going to recap some of our earlier stories from around the world when we return. Stay with us.